How's it going? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing another life purpose reading. Hey guys, what's up? It's Reminder or the RKH here to do a life purpose reading on Bonnie Henry. I feel like this has been long awaited compared to all the other ones I've done, like even more than Trudeau, people have been very eager for me to read on the human design of Bonnie Henry. If you don't know who Bonnie Henry is, she, Dr. Bonnie Henry, she is the <laughs> provincial health officer of British Columbia that was the one, let's say, announcing the decisions, uh, what, whatever the, the NDP government wanted here at, during the pandemic. So a lot of scrutiny of her and I try to keep a an objective view when I look at her. I, there's a couple of different scenarios. One, I don't really have much respect for people that are pushovers. I feel that you should stand in integrity. Um, so that's one part of it. And the reason I say that is because Bonnie Henry was a puppeteer in a major system. So for her, she was kind of like bulldozed into having to make these sort of announcements and was kind of the scapegoat, was the person that had all of the heat on her because she was the one in the public eye. So her alone, right, she alone cannot make a decision to shut down the province, shut down restaurants. This is a committee sort of decision. So if any of you have ever been on a committee, um, you know, the chairperson is the one that usually makes announcements. So when I've been a chair of a committee, of course, I consult with the committee and we have a meeting and we all give our, you know, our opinions and we come up with a mutual decision. The majority wins in that sort of scenario. And then usually it's the chair that will go and say, this is how we're going to execute or this is the plan. OK, so overall, she is not the one that made all of the decisions in B.C. And I think that that's important to remember that, like I said, this is a whole scheme, right? <sighs> Lots of energy. Let's take a couple of deep breaths. A lot of you know, I'm a psychic spiritual healer. I love to take some deep breaths with my clients when I'm coaching because we pass through a lot of energy. So let's just do that. Let's close our eyes and take a couple of deep breaths. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay. So get comfortable. I can feel a lot of the kind of panicky and racy energy. Maybe some of you are uncertain about what you're going to hear. Maybe you don't want to have compassion or empathy. And you know what? These videos are never to create that. It's to give the perspective of an individual's energy and how they make decisions. And you can choose to feel however way you want about that. Right? So like I said, I don't have respect for people that can't stand in integrity. And the thing is, is that when you don't stand in integrity, which is like you don't truly believe what you're saying, that can manifest into physical health symptoms. So that could go for anybody. We did see that with John Horgan. I hope that he recovers. If you guys don't know, he was the former premier um, of British Columbia and resigned his position mere months ago and had developed throat cancer. And that was something that was publicized during the pandemic. Of course, it was something that was already accumulating. And so we can end up having a throat chakra block when we aren't speaking our truth and when we are really hyper-focused and hyper-charged. And so overall, Bonnie Henry must be very burnt out. She's been very quiet. She's also going to be facing trial April 2023, which I do plan to attend if it does go forward. Um, I will be taking donations to attend because time is valuable. Uh, my job as a lawyer is also something that, you know, I'll, I'll be putting work in as a lawyer as well as an activist. And so keep an eye out for that. You'll know where to donate to to ensure that I can give my best and that the time is compensated for because I will be missing seven weeks of work to go and attend that trial in the hopes that it moves forward. So let's start on this human design reading, okay? Bonnie Henry is a manifesting generator. I have explained what a manifesting generator is in the video of Justin Trudeau. If you haven't watched that, that's okay. I'm going to explain it again here. Manifesting generators are some of the most alpha on the planet. They're, they're, they're in like the higher ranks of majority of profile or uh, human design types. So there are five specific types. 
manifesting generators and generators in human design are relatively similar, okay? So manifesting generators have, as they go on in life, the kind of like duty to see when to act versus when to sit back. Bonnie Henry has been super active and so now she's burned out, right? She burned out all her energy on her generator side because she said, let's say yes to too many things. She didn't want to say yes to, right? She said yes to things that were no's, which means that it eventually leads to burnout. It'll mean that maybe you need to take months off or a sabbatical and because things are kind of going back to the new normal, new, new normal, we're, we're seeing her quiet. And we also see that a little bit with Trudeau, but Freeland, as I was saying in my last life purpose video, okay? So overall manifesting generators are here to inform others about what to do. So she's very much in her purpose and I'm gonna go into her purpose and, and what that is, okay? But first I wanna talk about her profile type, which is a four, six. So she's an opportunist role model. And I know some people were chuckling at the word opportunist before. It's like, yeah, of course she's gonna take opportunity. And, and for sure, that's who she is. That's what she's meant to do. Take the opportunity that's handed to her so she can inform others as a leader. And so she has um, a profile that is quite stubborn. The four line in human design is a fixed stubborn energy. And overall, her energy is very, very stubborn. I see that by looking at her her crown center, her head center, and it's defined, right? It's colored in, so that's when we know that it's defined. And to me, what that means is she is very rigid in her thought pattern. She has, you know, the logic and the rationale which overtakes her ability to empathize with others around her. So it's like she sees a fact and that's the fact and it's not allowed to change. The thing is science is meant to change, it's meant to be fluid, is that I actually see science as an art. And if science was meant to stay plateaued, we wouldn't have the growth in technology. It's just fucking common sense, right? It's just how we've been programmed to think. And overall for her, she's meant to take these opportunities to be a role model. The thing is, is she's not exactly in that space of being a role model for many people, but in the early days of her career, I'm sure she was. I really didn't know who she was before this time. I'm sure she's inspired many people. She fell into a role that has now allowed her to be greedy. Um, and, and I don't know, that's just personally how I see it. Her incarnation cross is a left, the right angle cross of tension. And so some of you are gonna find this pretty funny her purpose on this planet is to provoke tension, is to provoke conversation and conflict in order to promote effective leadership. And the thing is, is it, it's working backwards for her, similar to how it was for Justin Trudeau. So if you haven't watched that video, I recommend you go and watch that. It's the first video on this YouTube channel, okay? So she is here to provoke tension in others, which she has very much done. That was a part of her purpose in the specific role. And how she's created effective leadership is by bringing freedom fighters and activists like myself. Well, I was already doing this kind of work, but overall more people out to share their voice and their opinion and their knowledge and their, um, their power, right? And so she has been able to really bring that momentum, especially to people in BC that were able to blatantly see the hypocrisy that was going on. And so she's very much living in her purpose in that realm because she is meant to, like I said, create that tension. People are, she is meant to learn actually more about herself through the way in which she's acted. So I'm gonna look a little bit more at her human design. So maybe looking down because I have my notes written of what I really want to go through for her, okay? And, and one thing I wanna say is, it's very important for her to maintain that energy in order to be effective. It's necessary for her to be in that energy. Unfortunately, because of the puppeteering or because she, was, she had her hands in a pot with many other people, likely a lot of privileged men, right? We, we have to look at the intersectional factors that play into her acting a specific way. How hard was it to get her role? How long did it take her? What's the internalization there, okay? So a lot to unpack, a lot to unpack, and, and that's everybody's individual choice to, to look at that for themselves, okay? So looking firstly at channel 20 to 34, which is the channel of charisma. For her, she, she's been able to bring 
all of the pro V people together, like get the V or die, or if you don't get the V, you don't deserve to go out and live a normal life. She had the strong ability to bring that community together, right? By living in her purpose, purpose or what she thought was purposeful, she was also able to create a different community of people that thought that wasn't right or a community of V-free individuals. And so her sporadic commentary, her um, self-righteousness is very much a part of her being in that purpose, a part of her provocation. One of the main things in her channel of sustenance, which is 21 to 45, is her ability to control. She has a strong desire and ability to control in the way that she is manipulative, in the way in which she comes across. So for her, she has the resources to make these sort of calls. And the way in which I look at her energy, and you know, I feel kind of bad in saying it is, it's the energy of the person that was bullied in school, was seen as the nerd, and then uses their power in the future to harm others or to put people down. That's how I see her energy, whether that is what really happened or has happened or was her upbringing, that's what I felt from the beginning is she finally has this power and this torch that she can carry. And so now she's going to use it to her advantage to get back at everybody that said she couldn't do X, Y, Z or called her certain names. But unfortunately, I mean, first of all, revenge is poison. Second of all, I say that because closure and forgiveness comes from within so we can release that so we can live a higher aligned life because Every single hardship we go through is meant to teach us a lesson, even though it fucking sucks a lot of the time, right? Fucking sucks. It's like, how did your hardship make you an activist for something? Is that a part of your purpose? And so it's hard to look at it objectively when, when you go through trauma, right? And so I'm not discounting that. But for her, she has been able or was able to thrive on the validation and reassurance that she was getting from those around her, from the public, from the government. And when the table started to turn or when more information started to come out, she started to lose that spark. A prime example being when she went on TV and started to talk about how the V does not impact fertility or pregnancy or women's health. And there was no research on that yet. She went and made a blanket statement of how that won't happen. And now that more testing and experimentation and research papers and studies are coming out about spontaneous abortions and miscarriages, etc. She's not once gone up to correct herself because she has that ego about her. So she has a very strong and ener uh, stubborn energy. Like I was saying with her, honestly with her, she has a defined head Anya, which is third eye and throat. So all of that for her is aligned and she has a split definition. What that means is her body energetically is split into two parts. So she has the ability to speak her truth and um, or what she thinks is her truth and have her thoughts a certain way and her vision for the world. Like everybody should have the V. This is the greatest thing ever. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Like that's literally what I see her as. And, um, you know, and then there's there's the like I said, the inability to empathize with with those around her because of that split definition she she doesn't even get to the point of seeing whether this is something emotionally not emotionally charged but how this impacts others emotions she can't she doesn't have a defined solar plexus or spleen like she doesn't have a defined instinct or connection to her emotions she has to actually unpack a lot of her conditioning to tune into that. And we're going to come to what her conditioning is, but she has to be able to do that. And the thing is, she has an easy time just saying what she wants and thinking what she thinks because she's so bogged down with this programming and she hasn't, maybe now she is, but she hadn't even began, begun to, began, begun to see things from, like I said, another perspective, sorry, um, if that was loud. So like I said, her, her ego, her identity is based on this power. And now it's, it, 
is going to be taken away from her. And what I've said very publicly before is that she should not be in her position that she's in. Somebody under investigation should not be in a position of power when it comes to public interest. Point blank, F in period. Point blank, period. That's just how it is in executive roles. That, that's my opinion. That's, how, that's what I've seen. That's been my experience. That's what I think is an ethical thing to do. It doesn't mean that you're assuming she's guilty or you're, you're assuming a thing. It's like if you're under investigation, which she technically is under this trial, she should not be able to hold that position and make decisions until there is a verdict, until there is an outcome because of the potential harm that could be caused moving forward. Like I said, she has very stubborn energy showing itself in 64 to 47. So for her, she has, like I said, she has a picture in her mind of what she wants the world to look like. Everybody jabbed, blah, 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 blah. Like for her, that, that lights her up. And so she's also capable of having breakthroughs. She's also very smart. So if she wanted to continue with her success, it would be smart for her to use her mind to, to learn about empathy, to learn about bedside manner in a way that she's never actually exhibited fully. The main conditioning that I see in her chart, 15, uh, 58 to eight, 18, the channel of judgment. She does not like to be judged. Like I said, I, I feel energetically that there's a lot going on with her inner child wounding and she hasn't ever unpacked that to like heal it. So at this time, she finds joy in expressing herself in whatever way it is. So the reassurance that she's gotten, the validation she's gotten that maybe she didn't get growing up. Additionally, she, you know, I just remember she's from, she's from Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, which is a super small town, smallest province in the country. So she had that small town girl vibe. People probably said, you're not going to do big things, right? So look at where she is versus where she is now. So she carries a lot of that, the judgment, and that is what's getting in the way right now because she's conditioned to believe certain things that now she tries to overachieve. But it's how are you doing that and how are you connecting? It's not what she actually sought out to do. 46 to 20, let me backtrack, sought out to do as in, she didn't want to have a negative influence. She wanted to have a positive influence. But using that power from a place of greed and ego is what ends up being dangerous, ends up being poison to us in the long term. 46 to 29, she has a hard time embodying truth, a hard time answering questions that's for sure so committing to her her truth like i think her question and answers not beating around the bush she has a hard time doing that because she is undefined in those areas like i was saying she she's unable to identify because she can't empathize in that specific space and so for her she, her drive, her growth, her ambition is based on a specific energy that is a more distorted at this particular time. Moving into her astrology, I was about to say, any questions? No one's here live. <laughs> Moving on to her astrology. She has a sun in Aries. She has a moon in Virgo and she has a rising in Cancer. So overall, her sun in Aries is how she views herself she views herself as a fearless leader the distorted side of aries is the egotistical egotistical maniac let's just say so you know she she believes she's a certain way she relates to herself a certain way when she's questioned she gets angry even if that's not publicly you can tell when she gets really irritated because she doesn't like to be asked those questions so because she hasn't gone inward to address her emotions Right, the 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 moon in, in Virgo is her internal world, her internal compass and her her dealing with her emotions. And so Virgo can be a little bit of a perfectionist, but also is very determined. But for her, her determination is like, oh, I need to be poised. So because she's not done that inner work to really heal that or address that at least publicly, she hasn't really shown that. We don't know what goes on behind closed doors she ends up kind of causing a dumpster fire for herself. And so her, 
the way that people see her, is, like some part of the population, is empathetic, is compassionate, is as a soft-souled, you know, fulfilling woman. And so she does a good job for the people that are aligned to, to listen to her or, or that share the same beliefs as her. Other things in her astrology that are sticking out, she has already gone through her Chiron return, which is the, I talked about the wounded leader um, in Trudeau and Christian Freeland's video. She's already gone through that. And so, oh, sorry, sorry. She is coming to that. So for her right now, what she is going through is very crucial in her overall growth. It's going to be very crucial for her to plant in her mind, really, the knowledge for her to really come into contact with the lower half of her body that she's currently disconnected from. So this Mercury retrograde is going to be very um, transformative for her energetically, whether or not we see those 3D manifestations, we don't know. I hear sirens in the back, which is usually a, con usually a confirmation from spirit. Hope whoever is hurt is okay. Mercury retrograde starting September 9th, 2022. Don't know when you're watching this. We're already already in a pre-shadow period. We then have about like a, a four week period of the retrograde and then a two week period of the post shadow. So overall, what that looks like is a lot of communication incoming. There could be old habits that come up, um, need for closure, need for reciprocity and balancing of the scales for her. Her Mercury is in Pisces. And so because we are having a Pisces full moon, she's going to be a little bit all over the place in terms of her self-expression. So if we see her come out and say something, okay, we, you know, don't get, don't get like scared. Um, it, if it seems like she still has those old patterns, she's going to be going through a lot of clearing at the specific time. Um, and let's just say every single action step we take is a catalyst for our growth. So if it seems like it's backwards, it's because it's meant to teach her something. It's like, you know, when you get sick of your own shit, that's the sort of energy I am feeling. So she, she needs to be kind to herself. She needs to really listen to her inner voice and all the lessons she's been through. It's like, how did she not like to be treated? And how was she, how has she internalized that and made that the reality for so many more people by bullying them, by coercing them, by calling them names? She didn't like that growing up, but because she's held on to that for decades, she now passes that on. How is that helpful? I think she's gonna start to slowly realize how that has happened when she can see the polarity of her actions. And so that's what's going to, that is what's going to really help her dream bigger and have a good plan and be able to face the public, let's say. What ends up holding her back is her, her lack of desire to look at her, her emotions her subconscious and her programming, which is completely natural, especially in that generation. But she will be going through Neptune and, and yeah, she has a Neptune placement in, in Scorpio. So she will be going through, we have a Neptune retrograde also starting right now, which is a, a Neptune retrograde in Pisces, which is addressing where you've had illusion, where you've been wearing your rose colored glasses. So for her, that would be about her influence. That would be about the great changes she thought she was making for society. It would be where she thought people trusted her and believed in her. And so with hope, she's gonna be bringing all of this energy um, to the positive mind, right? To, to really be empathetic, to take accountability and to be truthful. And I think that by doing that, she would gain a lot of respect. I think overall, I don't really know whether it's, it's going to happen. Um, I could see it where she she may have that solemn energy and tone when she comes back next time. She may play victim under direct or cross-examination during her trial. So it, this is all going to be about how she is really willing to look at herself. Can she look at the harm she caused on society based on her own trauma or not? Right? And I think that that's what a lot of people are seeking accountability around. So I'm going to leave it right there. I hope that this resonated. I have been asked to do a video on Jagmeet Singh. If you have any other ideas of videos that I could do or specific individuals that I could do them on, I'd be happy to do that. 
I would really appreciate it if you like, comment, and subscribe on this video. It means so much to me. I'm still building up my YouTube. Um, and you know, if you wanna see more videos like this, it will help me eventually get to that monetized space. So I'm able to um, actually do more of this and commit to it, which I want to do, um, but not give away my work. That is currently my income, okay? So if you ever wanna book a life purpose reading with me where you want me to sit down and go through your energies, you can do that via the link in the description box here and I would be happy to chat with you about your own human design or to do a coaching call with you if you're looking for any energetic guidance, all right? So I'm sending you so much love and I'll see you next time.